Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm going to show you how I made an English Bulldog Cake. Very heavy. I have made a lot of dog cakes in my time. I've made labs and golden retrievers and French bulldogs, but I've never gotten a chance to make my favorite dog, the English Bulldog. So this cake is part made for me and part made for you. So I'm gonna show you how to make it yourself. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, go ahead and subscribe to our channel below because we put out new cake videos every Monday and uh, sometimes we do more advanced cakes like this one so you can see how we make them. And also sometimes we make easier cakes that you can try. So let's get started. We're going to start out with layers of vanilla cake and in between each layer is a layer of chocolate ganache. So here I am trimming away some of the cake and it's going to taper towards the front because I'm working on the nose. I want to focus on the head first, make sure I get that correct before I worry about the body. Trim away a little bit of cake at a time. It's a lot easier to take away than it is to add. If you accidentally trim away too much, you have to kind of patch some cake, and it's a bit of a pain. So I recommend taking your time and trimming away a little bit of cake at a time. So you can see here we have the mouth area in the front, and then his nose and his eyes, and I even have a bit of a jawline in the back. But still pretty simple. Good boy. Now that the cake is carved, I'm going to cover it in a layer of chocolate ganache. You can use buttercream or chocolate ganache. The difference between the two is that buttercream at room temperature is extremely soft. So think about actual butter that's been sitting out. It's very, very soft, so you have to keep putting it in the fridge so it firms up and it's not too hard to work with. Chocolate ganache, however, when it's at room temperature, it sets relatively firm. Next, we're gonna cover the head in modeling chocolate. Then you work the modeling chocolate into all the little cracks. You wanna trim away the excess chocolate at the bottom and tuck that chocolate under the cake. Modeling chocolate is what we're gonna sculpt all the details out of. I'm going to start by drawing out where I want the mouth and nose to be. This is before I get into any major details. Then I go in and I start working on the nose. You can see I'm switching up my tools. Some of my tools are a little bit more pointed, some are rounded. Um, if you're ever working on a cake and you feel like you're kind of stuck, switch up your tool because that can really help sometimes. I am sculpting all of this out of the modeling chocolate that I covered the cake in. It really wasn't that thick of an amount and you can really get a lot of details out of it. So I didn't even add any chocolate quite yet. I have a bunch of images of English Bulldogs um, that I can use as a reference, so that's always great. Try to get some reference images that you can look at. It's very helpful, for sure. I would definitely not be able to do this without a bunch of pictures in front of me. I added a little bit of modeling chocolate to the bottom of his lip. I wanted his lips to look really, really, you know, saggy like an English Bulldog. I also added a little chocolate to create that big fold of skin above his nose. So for the eyes, I knew that I was going to end up sculpting pretty deep. So the modeling chocolate that I covered the cake in just wasn't thick enough, I would have poked through the cake. So I actually added some modeling chocolate and that way I know I can dig in and really create the eye sockets that are nice and deep. They're so cute. This is my favorite dog by far. So I'm adding the other eye just take a chunk of modeling chocolate, blend it into the head. And kind of map out where you want things and start working on that eye socket. I realized I had a little bit too much chocolate. You just easily trim that away and blend it in. 
That's what's so great about modeling chocolate. It blends really easily. It's very similar to clay. I added a little bit more chocolate in between his eyes to create a cute wrinkle there. And for the ears, they are made of just modeling chocolate. I took a thick triangle shaped piece of chocolate, I placed it onto his head, and then I sculpted it to look like an ear. Very cute. So once the entire face and head is sculpted, I placed it onto my final cake board that is covered in parchment paper, and I trimmed away the back of the head so it's nice and flat. So as I start to add these layers of cake, they match right up with the back of the head. Then I add layers of cake, chocolate ganache, cake, chocolate ganache, and I'm adding a little bit of a bulkier area of cake towards his shoulders because English Bulldog's shoulders are the highest point on their back. Then I started to trim away the cake. I knew I was going to have to add a little bit more cake in the back where his bum is, but I wanted to start carving the cake to get a better idea of how much cake to use. That's just something that I do because I don't like to waste cake. I want to use as little as possible since I'm trimming it away. But I do have a lot of awesome ways to utilize those cake scraps and a lot of videos where I make cake clay, uh, which is the stuff that cake balls are made of. You can really have fun with that. Uh, so in my, some of my other videos, you'll see I use cake clay. So that's what I do with my scraps. Don't want to waste. I added some of that cake in the back to create more of a butt on him, and then I trimmed it and sculpted it. Once the body is sculpted, I add a layer of chocolate ganache. This is the crumb coat. And then I smooth it out. And I took a blade and I trimmed away the parchment paper. Next comes a layer of modeling chocolate. And I thought it looked really adorable like this. It kind of looks like he has a blanket over him. So if you wanted to avoid the whole body, you could do that. <laughs> I almost considered it. I'm like, maybe I'll just have him wearing a blanket. <laughs> but no, we're gonna sculpt the body. Uh, so you want to put some gloves on because modeling chocolate can get a little sticky. If you're in a humid area, especially. It might be fine without gloves, but if it is sticking to your fingers and your tools, you want to put gloves on and you can put cornstarch directly on your tools to keep it from sticking. Then I start to work the modeling chocolate into all the creases. Uh, I wanted to define the neck wrinkles, his shoulders, his elbow, and uh, his knees. And I'm trimming away the chocolate and tucking it under the cake as I go. Got his little tail in the back. <laughs> so instead of sculpting the paws out of cake, directly on the cake, I decided to sculpt them off of the cake for a couple of reasons. Number one is they're so small that they don't really need to be made out of cake. But also it's a lot easier to sculpt a paw, you know, off the cake and then place it onto the cake and blend it into the arms. So I did that for all the paws. I only did three paws because his body makes it look as if his foot is tucked underneath his body. Next, I took a pointed tool and I added some texture to his nose. And for the texture for the hair, I added some very soft brush strokes. Now you do not want to dig too deep. If you dig too deep, the hair is gonna look kind of long and it can get a little messy, but if you're super soft with it, it's going to look like he has a nice short coat, just like an English Bulldog. For the eyes, I added a round circle of edible wafer paper, then I placed gelatin into the eye socket. Now I'm going to do a tutorial on how to make these gelatin eyes. And once it's up, I'm going to put a link in the description below, but you should absolutely subscribe to our channel if you're interested in seeing it uh, and click the notification bell. That way you know as soon as that tutorial is posted. And I know a lot of you are excited about it and I need to get it up very soon. So I'm gonna work on that, I promise. 
The gelatin eyes really look amazing, I, I have to admit. It's so nice to have like a, a somewhat simple way to add a nice, shiny, realistic eye. So there it is, unpainted. I always like to see the cakes before I paint. <laughs> I used gel food color and extract for this cake. You can use alcohol, like a really strong, clear alcohol like Everclear because it evaporates right away. But I uh, actually ran out. So I used almond extract, which worked just fine. You can also use water. It's a little bit trickier. It takes more time to get used to using water, but it is possible to use water, gel food color to paint on chocolate. Some people don't think so, but I've done it since five. I've done it for like eight years, so. I know it works. <laughs> now I wanted to add some shine to his nose, so I just took some piping gel and brushed that on once the color was dry. And I brushed it on his lips and teeth too. For the cake board, I used gel food color and water. And you don't want to use actual paint to paint the board. Because uh, you don't want it to touch the cake, of course. But since this is just food color, it's fine if you get a little, you know, on the base of the cake. We also have that parchment under there, so you know that there's a separation of parchment between the wooden board and the cake. That way your food's safe, for sure. And there you have it, an adorable English bulldog cake. Now, yes, we are going to cut this cake. Don't be mad at me. It's just a cake, I promise. And it's in person, you know, it tastes like cake, it smells like cake, it looks like cake. Even though this might weird you out, I swear it's not so bad. <laughs> well, maybe I'm just used to cutting all my cakes, but it's definitely fun, so let's cut them. <laughs>